Hi there, welcome to the first of our weekly PSD2s screencasts. I'm Gavin Steele, and I'm going to be taking you through this high impact gig poster, which is suitable for screen printing, or at least gives a very good impersonation of a screen printed poster. Tutorial is created by James Davis. You can check his site out over here, jameszilla.co.uk. And all the images that we're going to be using in this particular tutorial can all be found over at Stock Exchange. So have a play around and see if there are any images that you might want to use instead. And don't forget to check out all of our videos on our Vimeo channel at vimeo.com forward slash PSDTUTS. Okay, so let's get started. This is the tutorial we're going to be going through today. You can see this really cool gig poster here. Uh, we're just going to play around with the ideas of degrading an image, making it black and white, uh, grayscale, sorry, uh, playing around with some of the, the texture and feel of the image and these little flames down here. So let's get started by loading up Photoshop. Okay, so here's the one I was playing around with earlier. We're going to create something a little bit similar to that. I'm just going to minimize that down. And the first thing you need to do is go to File, go to New. And we're going to open up with a preset set to International Paper and have that set to A4. Click on OK. And this is going to be our main document that we're going to be working with. We're going to load up the two other images, the photographs, and we're going to play with them and then import them onto this main stage. So for now, I'm just going to minimize that down. The first image that you would need to use would be the image of, let me grab the girl. OK. And to get that image, you just click on the website, head down to where the link girl is, click on that, and that'll take you to Stock Exchange. And if you've got an account, it's totally free. You can click on it, and you get the much larger image. You can just see the top left corner there, and you just drag that onto your desktop or straight into your Photoshop file. So once you've got that in there, we're going to start playing around with it. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger, a bit more retail on the screen here. Yeah, okay. And I don't want my background over there to, to annoy you too much. Okay, so here's a picture of the girl. We've downloaded the first thing we need to do is desaturate it. So I'm just going to hold down Command, Shift, and U. And that just desaturates the image for me. The next thing I'm going to do is head up to Image, go to our Adjustments panel there, go down to Shadow and Highlight. And I'm going to set that to... Now you can see I've got all of these open here, and all I did there was I clicked on Show More Options a little bit earlier, just in case you have, you've only got the top box. So I'm going to set the first one to 7, then 50, 30, 11, 52, 30, plus 20, 0, 0.01, 0 0.01 is fine as well. Okay, so what you should see now is just, just darken some of those areas and create a good little tone that we can use. The next thing we need to do is actually use our tool of the left, the burn tool. Okay, I've got that set there. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And we're just gonna play around with burning some of these little details here. Okay, the little changes in tone, the skin color, and so on, just make them stand out a little bit more. So to do that, I'm gonna make sure my exposure is set down to about, yeah, eight or nine. That should be fine. I'm going to select from here shadows. And then, actually, you might want to start with midtones and, and go from there. And then, using smooth strokes, I'm literally just going to click on these little areas here. I might just increase that a little bit. And just smooth down and just play around with the darker areas. All the skin folds things like that. I want to play around with. Again, this is going to be trial and error with any photo that you're going to use. You might want to practice with this one. And just see, we're just darkening where the skin kind of changes color, goes a little bit darker. I'm going to zoom in on the chest area just here. And again, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just going to, where all these little creases are, I'm just going to darken those as well. So, Create a stroke straight up there, like so, and then along here. This little area down here could do a little bit. Here where it just curves a little bit. 
just going to darken that area there and here and uh, a bit at the top. That should be enough. I'm just going to zoom out. Okay, that looks good. Then what I'm going to do is come down the leg. I'm just going to increase that a little bit, my brush size, and just get the little shape of the leg there. Okay, touch that top bit. So I'm just going around the different tone areas of the body. Don't worry about the face. Obviously, we're going to be getting rid of that and replacing it with the tiger's head. So here we go. We're going to actually start the real degrading of the image. And to do that, we're going to apply a noise filter. So we're going to add noise, we're going to set that to 4.4, that's fine. Make sure you've got Gaussian select there and click on OK. Then we're going to head over and apply Gaussian Blur. So again, back up to Filter, Blur and Gaussian Blur. And have that set to about 1.0 and click on OK. Then what we need to do is we're going to sharpen our image. Again, back up to Filter, head down to Sharpen. We're going to use a Smart Sharpen. And we're going to have this set to... The amount should be set to about 362. And then the radius, we're going to have a nice little uh, radius of, let's say, 16.7. And then make sure you've got Gaussian Blur set there and click on OK. We're going to sharpen it one more time. Don't make the mistake that I didn't click on Smart Sharp because it's just going to apply exactly the same settings again. We're just going to change them ever so slightly. So we're going to head back. Sorry, to sharpen, a smart sharpen, and we reduce that now down to what it was before 120, 41, big radius, 0.6. Again, Gaussian blur, just to give it that thick outline, that kind of posted cutout outline that we want to get. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to clone out the back area. So head over to your clone tool over here, hold down Alt, click on the area. You want to clone, I'm just going to increase that size a little bit and just take out my head. Like so. Don't worry if you think you can see the clone parts, we'll get rid of them in a second. Until we get down to about the top of the chair. Uh, but apart from that, that's okay. And again, holding down Alt, just collect, select the areas around, and slowly you'll see that you can hardly tell where any of those changes have been made because the background's all quite ununiform. Or oh, non uniform, sorry. Right, once you've done that, we're going to cut and paste her out of this image and we're going to stick her into our main image. So I'm just going to, for speed, to select all. Copy. I'm going to bring up that A4 piece we had earlier, that nice canvas, and I'm going to paste that straight in, and then I'm going to just transform it a little bit, just going to scale it down, holding down Shift, let's see how that's looking. Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to give myself a little bit more room at the top. So I might just lose the foot. We're going to have the flames coming up from the bottom anyway. Just move it in. We can lose a little bit of the chair as well if we want. Something like that. And then just hit enter. Brilliant. Okay, so we've finished with the girl. The next thing we need to add is our tiger. So again, I'm just going to come over, grab my tiger. Just take it into Photoshop. There we go. And we're going to cut out the tiger's head now for this particular style that we're going for, we don't have to be that detailed around the edges. So all you need to do is select the pen tool, and we're just going to roughly, whoop, let's head over to this middle option here, which is just the paths, so we don't want the shape. And again, to start clicking, and you can just be really rough with this. Get a nice shape of the year. Like so, going like that. Hold down Alt, start that again. There we go. And nice and roughly, we're going to go around the ears. And don't worry too much about detail of the fur. 
Okay, once you've got that selected, we're going to head over to Paths, make it a selection, go back to our layers, we're going to duplicate the background layer, and then holding down Alt, I'm going to click on my mask. So basically we just made a mask of that rough selection that we had. Now we're going to fill this background layer with white. So I'm going to select that, and quickly grab a large brush, here's a massive one I got earlier, Okay, you can just fill that straight in. And you can see we're left with that really, really rough cutout of the head. Now if we select our actual mask there, and we go to our eraser tool, or our smudge tool actually we can use for this, grab your smudge tool, grab a nice little splattered brush, something like that, and then decrease the size. Um, play around with each one, we're just going to click out so you get a nice little furry effect coming out, whoops and the reason we do that is so that we get this nice little furry edge to our image, we're not using a round brush because that would just give us a round edge all the way around, by using the different splatters you can really get a nice effect of fur and again just increase the size of your brush and this is going to take a little while. Well, I just you don't want any straight edges, really. Sorry, my clicking game out of control there. You can see it makes for a nice little furry top. Saves you having to do all the hair yourself and worry about that. It works particularly well for the poster or the screen printed poster design. Obviously, for other images, you want to take a bit more time in your selection and use some of the methods of capturing the hair or drawing them on or any other ways you might have. But for now, this is fairly quick and works kind of nice and easy. Sorry for the annoying clicking. Unfortunately my wackles playing up a little bit so I'm just using a standard mouse okay I don't want to annoy you too much with that but once you're happy and you've got some nice fur sticking out around the tiger's head like that that's pretty much it that's all you need to worry about for the hair so what we're going to do next is we're going to after we've smudged it we're going to degrade the image in exactly the same way as we did with our girl because we want it to work in exactly the same way. Now what I want to do is go back to our female image, uh, sat there on that chair and we're going to head up to image mode and we're going to hit grayscale and we can hit on button, click on discard. Then we're going to go to image mode bitmap and you're going to have it set to 300 Make sure you select the half tone screen, click on OK, and then set that to 30, 45 round. Click on OK, and you can see you can get that nice degraded image. It looks a little bit photocopied, looks a little bit like the, the canvas or the screen that's been used to actually get the image on there. And we're going to do exactly the same thing to this image here. So we're going to start like we did with the first image. We're going to desaturate it, so Command Shift U. Should hopefully desaturate that. For some reason, oh, I'm not on that. Right, so the first thing I need to do is just flatten that down a little bit. So if I just control click, flatten the image. Right, desaturate it. And then what we're going to do is head over to our noise filter again. Going to add some noise. It's got the same settings as we used before filter, Gaussian blur. Again, just one, that's it. And then we're going to go to Sharpen, Sharpen Smart, set it back to the original, which was 362, I think, yep. And we had a smaller radius of 16.7. Click on OK. And then go back to our filter again, Smart Sharpen, and put it back to 120. And to get those thicker edges, we set it to 41. 
0.6. Click on OK. Then we're going to head up to Image, Grayscale, Discard, Image, um, Bitmap, exactly the same settings as before. Don't worry about the output of that. Round is fine. Okay, and we start to get very similar degrading to the head area as we got with our original image. I just want to double check. If we go back to image, bitmap, maybe that should be on 300. Half turn screen, 30, 45, round. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, so you can see we've got pretty much exactly the same details we had on the girl. Now the next thing we need to do is obviously get that head onto this image here. So we're going to go back to image mode, go back to grayscale for a second, okay, and then create a new layer. We're going to grab our head, copy that on this new layer, just going to paste it in and obviously we're just going to scale it down until you get something that you think you're going to be happy with. Mm, yeah, that looks all right for now. So I'm going to hit enter and just going to stick that straight on there. So once you've got that on there, the next thing we need to do is we're going to draw a line around the whole of the tiger's head. And the reason we're going to do that is because we're going to use the, uh, the magic wand tool just to get rid of this area around here. So I'm just going to grab my pencil tool, make sure I've got black selected and literally you can take your time with this but just want to make sure we don't have any white areas. I'll just zoom in to show you what, what we're doing here. We're just making sure there's a solid black line somewhere all the way around because what will happen is we'll lose some of our image if we just use the magic wand tool. But it's perfectly fine to use the magic wand tool. It provides a nice and easy way. Just get all these areas that might just bleed in. That's all fine. And uh, just my luck, there will be an area that I missed, but for now, it all looks very funny. It's gonna come down to the whiskers area here. Again, you can zoom in and really take your time with this. You can get quite a nice effect, believe it or not, despite going really quickly around. Okay, so I'm going to hit our magic wand, select that area there. Yeah, looks like we did a good job. Select delete, and then just deselect and Zoom out a bit and you can see already those two separate images are starting to form part of the same image. So nice and easy tool. Obviously the more time you spend on fluffing out the fur and stuff, you're going to get a slightly better effect, but it doesn't really matter too much. We want it to look kind of grungy. We want to kind of look like it's being thrown together in, in someone's flat just for their friend's gig and they're going to go, I don't know, use some wheat paste and stick it up somewhere. So right now that's looking really, really good. The next thing we need to do is <coughs> excuse me is clone out the hair down the bottom so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit grab our clone tool just reduce our brush size again to reduce your brush size you can just go up here and move the slider and the area we're going to clone is right here and we just use alt to select the area you want to copy and then normal click the area you want to clone out. Until you get something that you're relatively happy with. Like that, and you can go over here and play around with this area here. But that looks pretty good. Just going to zoom out again. Okay, so once you've cloned out the hair, we're going to go to 
image, mode, and then RGB, and flatten. Then what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our background layer. So, control click, duplicate the layer, doesn't really matter what you call it. We're going to set that to multiply, and then we're going to fill the bottom layer with a colour of your choice. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneakily grab a little bit of pink from down here if I can. Will it let me? No, oh, it almost did. So grab a pink color or a ready orange color. It's up to you whichever kind of final color image you want to go for. And then I'm just going to use my big brush tool from before. And we're just going to fill the background there like so. And once you've filled it with the color, we're going to create a new layer in between, and then we're going to select the outline of our lady. I'm just going to quickly use the polygon tool, zoom in a little bit, and again, the reason we do this stuff really quickly and we're not really worried about edges and things like that is because that's the, the effect that we're going for. We want it to look rough and throw together, so just quickly trace around the, out, the outline of her body. Again, you could spend a little bit more time with this with the pen tool, but this will work just fine. Now, as mentioned throughout the tutorial on PST Toots about the different um, colors that you're going to be using, again, if you wanted to print this, uh, screen print it yourself, there are a lot of things to actually consider about the different types of colour that you use, you might not be able to match the exact same colours that you use in Photoshop. Um, go to your printers or screen printers and see you know, how they want the files to be prepared. There's a lot of people talking about preparing the colours in different channels and things like that. So there is actually quite a bit for you to consider, but to get the style and effect oh, I thought that went down a bit further. To get the style and effect of a screen print from say a picture of you and your friends or whatever it is, this is a great little tutorial on doing that. But by all means head over to the comments section of the tutorial, loads of people have added some great links to everything that can help you get on your way to actually screen printing an image like this. Okay, so head down to the bottom over here. And we should be able to finish it off perfect. Once you've traced around the body, we're going to fill this with an off-white color. So again, select this color. I'm going to go for a creamy off-white or something like, like that. That's okay. And then what we're going to do is again grab my big brush tool and we're just going to fill that area there. And make sure you select all the colors that you want. And then with the pen tool, we can start to create the the fiery layer. So I'm just going to quickly show you that part on the actual image itself. That's these parts down here. Now they are really, really tricky, I think, to actually use. I'm not a great user of the pen tools or for creating curves. So I'm just going to get you down to that part of the tutorial. And it shows you where you need to click and the angles that you need to use. So if I just show you me, oh, let's find the right image, you know, trying to do that. If I grab the pen tool, it says to make them shape, make it back for now, it says click here, second point, here, and then move the angle, and then the next point here, and here, and here. You can see I get into all, all kinds of trouble. So what I decided to do was, just for the speed of this tutorial, because it took me quite a while to get the fire and everything done right. Do play around with the pen tool. It is a really great tool um, to use once you've you know once you've mastered it. But I'm unfortunately still at that stage. I'm still mastering it. I just grabbed a screenshot of the fire image that I liked. So this image here, and I'm just going to drag that straight in right now. Grabbed the screenshot, dropped it into Photoshop, 
I'm going to increase the image, so image size. Let's do it by about 300. Click on OK. Then what I'm going to do is just select a color range, choose black, click on OK, create a new layer, grab my brush tool, zoom out a little bit, Oop, not that much, and then just fill that layer black. So make sure you fill that layer there. Okay, you get something like that. I'm going to command A, command C. And I just pasted that straight on top, like so. And then using the move tool, hold down Alt. until you get something that you're happy with. Do play around with the pen tool just for the speed of this tutorial. I didn't want to take too much time actually doing that. But if you play around with it, you will get it. I'm unfortunately still at that stage where I'm trying to get it. But that's generally the kind of effects you get. You could have just used, I could have used the pen tool and drawn out, you know, a shape. Ooh. Like so. And then if you control click on that, you could have filled that, or I could have made that a selection. Zero in there. And then I could have filled that with black. Oop. Inverse that selection. Filled that with black. And I would have had a fiery little flick going up. But again, it just takes me a little bit too long to actually master that pencil for this tutorial. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to add a little bit of text now. So I just undo that shape. And to do that, again, grab a font that you like. Nice big black letters going across the top. You might want to type a letter on each line. So I'm just going to do B. Increase the size of that font a little bit. Okay, happy with that. And then move it down or into place, transform it a bit. And we're just going to basically roughly move, uh, spread out the letters so that we get a nice layout for our writing. So let's do R. And again, whoop, move that into place. Oh. Play around with your fonts, play around with their positioning, just rotate them the odd way. And finally at the X. Okay, once you're happy with the positioning of your letters, you can do all kinds of things to them. You can grab the eraser tool, grab a grungy brush tool. Head over to the letter and you can start degrading the letters, start taking you know but chunks out of them. We can use the magic wand tool, select the letter B, fill it with black, oh, new layer, fill that with black, get rid of this layer, then when we go to the eraser tool, you can see we can start taking chunks out of that letter. Like so, click on the R. Maybe you want to fill in that top half of the R. Again, we just fill that with black. And our new layer. Hide our original layer. Head over to our rubber and deselect. And 
and you can just play around with all of these letters and get a great effect really quickly or at least try to get it really quickly. Okay, so I've got my O selected there. I'm going to fill that with black, my new layer. Hide the original O, grab my eraser tool, and just crunch that up a little bit. And then again, magic one tool my end. And you get the general idea. I think the main point of the tutorial just covering how you make something look like it's been done by a screen print or something like that. And I think it's a great effect. Some great lessons to be for any newbies or anyone not knowing well the technique. Some really good, useful tools that you can use in any project. And finally, just mess around with Alex a little bit. Oop, not too much. Okay. So that's my final image there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check out all of the tutorials over at psttoots.com and more of James Davis's tutorials. So thanks very much for joining me. I'm Gavin Steele, and I hope you enjoy this week's tutorial.